Hi everyone, welcome to First Things First. We're going to start the show off a little differently today since it's our first time on air since we were at the parade in Kansas City. Here's the latest news out of Kansas City. Uh, Police Chief Stacy Graves said at a press conference that Lisa Lopez Galvin, a 43-year-old mother of two and a local DJ, has died. Graves also said over 20 people were wounded. Their ages range from 8 to 47. There are currently three people detained, but charges have not yet been filed, and the shooting appeared to stem from a dispute, according to police. So that's the news. Um, Brew, we were there, obviously. Uh, your reaction 24 hours later. Well, I want to say this first, not as a cliche, but because prayer works. And uh, prayers up for Lisa Lopez Galvin's family, loved ones, uh, her survivors, for the those who are injured and in the hospitals now and for their family and for all those that saw what happened yesterday and may have been traumatized mm -hmm. by what they saw or experienced, whatever it may be. I pray for their comfort and their mental and emotional well-being going forward for what they may have seen. So um, also in we were all at the hotels in our rooms afterwards and I, I'm sure you guys were doing what I was doing, which was watching the news. And I saw that um, some of the broadcasters, one in particular I can think of, who was very upset, clearly upset, that she even said something to the effect of with the whole nation focused on Kansas City, mm -hmm. this is how we represented ourselves. And I get where she's coming from, but I would say that, you know, virtually everyone at the parade was great and there were more far more heroes than villains i mean you heard stories and we've seen people talk about putting their own lives at risk by tackling people that they thought were the shooters and may may have well been the shooters and so that's incredible bravery right there and also just throughout the day before the shooting it was a great day. It was. And the fans couldn't have been better. Um, I took pictures with dozens of fans. And, um, I mean, but for the, the 30 seconds of brew was wrong chance that I think you guys egged them on with. We did not. Yeah. It, it was great, you know. So, I, I just think, look, unfortunately, this happened, but it's not representative of Kansas City. You're from there, Nick. Sadly, this is becoming more and more commonplace in America and could could happen in any of our cities. And in fact, I, look, look, they have had shootings either directly related to or sl slightly indirectly to the periphery of championship celebrations. The uh, the Texas Rangers, when they were won the World Series in 2022, uh, the Nuggets, yeah. of course, when they won it in 2022, um, Cleveland in 2016, Toronto, which of course is not America, but Canada, the Dodgers, you know, the Bucks when they won it recently. So this is happening far too often. And it was actually CNN was reporting our 48th mass shooting, which is four victims or more mm -hmm. who were shot um, in this calendar year, which is more than one a day. And that's actually a little down. But that's far too many. Mm -hmm. So I would just say to everyone who's concerned about this situation, as we all should be, to first look in the mirror. Whether you're a politician, a lawmaker, uh, a parent, or just a, a typical citizen, we all have to look in the mirror and whatever we can do. Some of us have more power to make a change than others. But whatever we can do to make a change, we got to do it. Because we don't want our children growing up in an environment where you can't have mass gatherings without the fear of shootings going on. So those would be my thoughts. And um, it's just, you know, it was a very unfortunate and sad day. Mm -hmm. So I echo your um, sentiments about prayer for not only people who were physically wounded and um, Lisa Lopez Galvin, who lost her life, but also for everyone who was traumatized by it. Mm. Uh, I don't know exactly what I'm going to say, and I didn't know this morning what I was going to say. But I'm like, oh man, I got to say something. So I called somebody who works in news, and I'm like, what am I supposed to say here? Mm. Um, and he said, you know, you have a first person perspective on what happened, just be authentic with how you felt, 
while at the same time acknowledging that you're very lucky to be okay in the lar in the grand scheme of things, but at the same time, not perfectly okay. It was yeah. not. It was different than it was last year. Um, so then I started to kind of wrap my head around like luck. I'm like, well, that's. I just couldn't get past it, right? And he's like, well, talk about your day. So I started all the way. I'm like, this is what we did. We took an airplane. We had some food. We stayed at the hotel. And then we were on the periphery of a mass shooting. Now, luck didn't really play a part in the first three things I described. Like, there's a lot of rules, regulations, and safety precautions and getting on that plane. They're not all perfect. I get it. I want to keep my shoes on too. <laughs> but I get it. And you know what? If a door pops off an airplane, it's international news. Which Never mind people being hurt. And when you go to a hotel, I had a cup of coffee working a little bit of uh, construction, really destruction. I was kind of breaking stuff so other people could build it. I wasn't that good at building. But my dad does carpenter. There's a thousand rules and regulations, man. Yep. I wasn't in that hotel thinking, whew, lucky that chandelier didn't fall on me. And when we had lunch, I'm like, man, lucky this food's not poisonous. Right. If anyone's worked in food services, a thousand rules and regulations there, too, to keep people safe. Let me get to the parade. And it was like, oh, we're very lucky. Yeah. And I, I had a hard time wrestling with that. And, and this is the last one. I don't know if I want to say this one. Uh, the one thing that got me mad, because, like, you get a thousand emotions in it, right? So, like, it was, like, super joy, right? You had, like, a ball of joy. Imagine, like, a glass ball of joy. That's what the day was. Yep. It was, like, pure joy for, like, a million people. Yeah. Like, literally. Literally. And, like, to infringe on Disney's copyright, like, the happiest place on earth, I literally think that... Until the shooting, that was the happiest place on earth. Millions of people all dressed the same, super, like yep. thrilled, unified and thrilled. And then that glass ball breaks into a million shards of emotions. Confusion, anger, sadness, grief, fear. fear. It's all, there's more. There's the illogical stuff. And I was, while we were walking out, and I didn't feel like we were in grave danger thanks to our security, and just, it felt far away. I saw this kid kind of walking, and he wasn't in immediate danger, at least I didn't feel like that. It felt like we were far away when we were walking up that little hill. And I was like, man, this is not fair. Like, this kid's, and then this kid's lucky. He's one of the, he's the lucky, there's other kids who are in the hospital right now, and there's kids who've lost their mother, and this kid, who I, I guess got mad that this moment was stolen from him. Mm. Yeah. And so, I, but we're all lucky. So that's what I'm, I mean, this might not be coming out perfectly, but I, that's what I've been trying to wrestle with. Yeah. That the idea that we're lucky to be in this situation, to come out of it physically unscathed, because other people tragically weren't. Um, well, I, I think that was beautiful, Wilds. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you guys about the times my family first saw me cry because there's a chance you guys are going to see me cry for the first time. For Diora, my older daughter, it was December of 2012 in the lobby of her school when she was seven years old when I went to pick her up the day of Sandy Hook. And that day, of course, someone with a lightweight semi-automatic rifle shot around two dozen kids her age, and I saw her in that lobby, and I immediately started sobbing. It's the first time she ever saw me cry. Mm -hmm. My youngest daughter, Deanna, who's been on this show, who you, everyone here knows really well, first time she ever saw me cry was March of 2022 in our kitchen when I opened up Twitter and saw what had happened at Robb Elementary. And someone with a lightweight semi-automatic rifle Shot around two dozen people that were her age, and I and I sobbed. 
and she was concerned. She didn't know. I didn't. I, I just like it was so. And I'm not a big crier. Nothing against it, but I I sobbed. And yesterday, shortly after, a few kids themselves with lightweight semi-automatic rifles shot around two dozen people. Uh, my wife saw me cry in a way I haven't. And it wasn't when uh, at the parade. It wasn't on the walk over. It was at the hotel. Once we had gotten to the safety of our room, we're at the elevator. And there was this little old lady who was on the phone fighting back tears, mm. wearing a chief shirt. And she saw me and knew us, knew the show, and came over and gave me a hug and started crying. Mm. And I still didn't cry yet. And then we talked. And she said she was there with her kids and grandkids. And her, I believe she said, 14-year-old granddaughter had to take the lead because she's been trained for this. And the adults wow. hadn't. And I cried. And I cried because it's so god dog cruel what we've taken from this generation of kids that we all got. There, listen, yesterday, Wilds is right, we're lucky, but yesterday was also the single worst 10 seconds of my life. And it was not, it was not the, when we heard the gunshot and were told to get down, and it was not, it, the, ten, the, the part that is seared into my memory from a selfish perspective is the time between them telling us active shooter and me finding in the crowd ostensibly where the shooter was, my wife, my sister-in-law, and her best friend. Because I, you know, th those, that 10 seconds felt like it was five minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, but that, that is, that is a, such a different feeling than for these young kids who have now had to learn, drill, and experience what to do in a mass shooting situation before they lose their first tooth, yeah. before they have their first kiss. For those kids there yesterday, part of their childhood ended. And to your point, those are the kids that we consider lucky, mm -hmm. the kids who didn't end up in hospital beds. And so I, I, I'm incredibly sad about this, and this is where I will pivot a bit, but... I am furious. I'm furious because this is so clearly all our fault. And we have so clearly lost the plot so quickly. I understand now that at this point, talking about any type of regulations whatsoever on guns in America is verboten for some. But we, some of the strictest state why gun regulations ever passed in this country were passed by Ronald Reagan. Right. And the, the assault weapons ban in the 90s was supported by Ronald Reagan, who is a paragon, uh, you know what I mean, for uh, many uh, on the conservative side of the right. aisle. I, we say when it comes to this particular topic, we turn ourselves into morons. We say ludicrous things like, why have laws? People break them. Like, we make these arguments of, well, if you pass a law, only criminals will break the law. As if, okay, well, then make selling meth legal because only meth dealers will break it. We, 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 we trick ourselves into good guy with a gun. There were 800 good guys there yesterday. How many of them did we shake hands with before that we saw? There were uniform police. There were, there, there, you couldn't have had more good guys. Prepared, ready. And in an instant, there's nothing they can do right. until after the fact and mitigate the damage. And that's my home city. And the only thing that brings Kansas City together is the Chiefs. We are a divided city. We are a segregated city. We have, the Chiefs is the only thing that brings it together. And the moment is, is shattered. Mm. Mm. And... The state of Missouri, as of October, was fighting at the Supreme Court 
to not allow local police to enforce federal gun laws. They were fighting against the local cops' ability to enforce federal gun laws. That's how insane we've gone. And what we will do is to just keep plowing ahead. We will continue with the wellness checks that my best friend in the world called me yesterday to check on me. Just like I did for him two years ago when he was at a parade in Highland Park, Chicago that got shot up on the 4th of July. And we'll just keep going with active shooter drills and a generation of kids who had this part of their life stolen from them and throw our hands up and say, what can we do when we all know the answer? And so I, 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 you guys struck a far better tone than me. I apologize, but I am heartbroken and I love Kansas City so much. And I, those kids were so happy and those people were so happy and some some kids themselves with easy access to rifles and other guns did that. Uh, all right, we'll be right back. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get more from the show and to check out clips from other shows on FS1.